All right, so we are we are now just uh, uh, one pass at 9.30, so uh, we should get started. Uh, welcome to uh, TBR uh, 118. Uh, I am here. Uh, Tony uh, is, is not here in person, but he is here with us uh, online in spirit. Uh, so let us begin. Uh, a, a quick note to, to start off, uh, as many of us know, uh, this session is being recorded. Uh, please, please be aware of that. A couple of standard uh, note well items. Uh, by participating uh, here, you agree to follow uh, our IETF processes and policies. Uh, please be aware that any discussions uh, that happen here uh, are considered to be discussions in, in the uh, public domain. If you, uh, I know that we are well into IETF, but uh, the agenda is located here. Our particular uh, TBR agenda is also located on the TBR homepage have some feedback. Uh, if you are participating in person, uh, please take a moment and make sure to sign into Meet Echo uh, so that we can, you can be able to join the queue and also so that attendance uh, will be uh, logged. Uh, and generally, uh, please make sure that you are, you are signed in and doing the electronic blue sheets. If you are online and you are not presenting, uh, please ask that you um, mute your video uh, and audio uh, to save some bandwidth. And otherwise, let's go into uh, what we're going to be talking about today. So in furtherance to the working group milestones, uh, again, uh, by November, which is now, we wanted to make sure that we were uh, proceeding and wrapping up our problem statement and use cases, uh, going into the spring, working on uh, requirements, which would then help us understand information models, then data models, and then uh, the statements of applicability and considerations. Uh, to that, to that end, uh, we have a, a, a good agenda today, starting with a requirements uh, discussion uh, with uh, Daniel and then going into uh, use cases and then having some time, both uh, 20 minutes for each of them, but also some time that's been allocated for technical discussion, uh, just to make sure that we, we aren't just presenting, but also being able to have some discussion uh, in the meeting. And then we'll uh, go from there. Uh, before we start, uh, are there any uh, Questions, concerns, or observations on the agenda? Any agenda bashing? All right. Uh, well, with that, I uh, would invite Daniel to come up, and we can start uh, with our requirements presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Uh, hi, good morning, everyone. And uh, thanks for everyone attending remotely as well. I know it's very early for some of you. So this is uh, an update of our requirements document. This is essentially the second version of the relatively recent adopted uh, document itself. Notice that we have uh, a number of uh, new participants uh, with the work. So these are our new contributors. And what we've done is essentially merge some of the requirements and the text from two other non-working group documents that were submitted and actually I think both IDs were presented at the previous IETF but if you look at the diff of the document then you'll see sort of some new sections and I'll, I'll, I'll cover them anyway in the in the presentation so I am pressing the button but ah, it's not working oh uh, and we went ahead too many yeah thank you so essentially the document 
identifies the core requirements that were then used for developing solutions work and potentially the data model within the TVR working group and any ancillary technology that we might need for the control play. We also want to think about uh, some uh, scenarios, um, deployment strategies as well that different use cases might require. And I suppose the use case is sort of an operative term here. And what we're trying to do with the requirements document is distill those specific scenarios that are documented in the other working group document, the use case document, which I believe is the next pre presentation. And those are split, I think, currently into three categories. And one of the things that we need to think about for the requirements document is how we actually document uh, the requirements in this draft. And I identified already that we've got a set of core requirements, but then for some of the use cases, maybe it's a corner use case, uh, these might be use case or application specific and not actually sort of classed as a core requirement. Uh, so that's kind of something that we need to really think about. Now, the requirements themselves in this document aren't only driven by the use case document. There may be other discussion that we're seeing on the list, for instance, uh, where we're actually bringing that uh, into this doc document. So we've uh, essentially um, assumed that we will have a network where uh, loss of link or node is to be expected. Now, the way that these uh, network topologies are built and the information that's exchanged will be based on um, state changes that are either intrinsic uh, or extrinsic. Uh, and there may be full or partial updates uh, to these topologies. And we will also have uh, several elements that will be affected uh, by potentially a schedule. So that will be things like the node itself, uh, a termination point, which may be physical or logical, um, like a VPN or a network interface card, uh, uh, as well as the link itself. And these topology changes, the schedule change, may be time specific, so time variant, but it may be resource based as well, such as energy. And of course, uh, we need to consider the cost and um, cost here may be a intrinsic value for the time schedule, but it also may be uh, a, a, an element of resource or even a financial aspect as well. And I think for TVR, when we started the discussion, when we had our BOF back in many years ago now, I think it was last year, November, maybe, I can't remember, it's sort of stuff for time dilation these days. Um, we got very excited to buy things like the LEO use case. We're now getting sort of distracted slightly with some of the uh, deep space networking because that's shiny and that's cool as well. We can get very excited about that. But uh, I just want to underline, actually, there are several really interesting use cases for TVR that are ter sort of terrestrial based. And we should really kind of look to kind of nail down some of these examples. We've got, uh, for instance, uh, um, sort of power constrained networks. Uh, there is, yes, line of sight as well. Uh, there may be uh, networks that effectively have um, solar cells uh, and those regenerate, uh, but it's kind of finite the amount of power uh, that we can use. You, so, so, so let's look at some of the use cases which are kind of much more short term, but keep in mind, of course, some of the longer term uh, and, and, and your time is relative, uh, uh, but I think Things like deep space, you know, potentially we're looking at quite a significant um, timeline there. So as I mentioned, uh, we are symbiont, I hope, with the use case document itself, which is coming up and the three ca ca categories there. What we've tried to do with the requirements document now is expand and detail the terminology that we want to uh, associate with TBR. And of course, that should be driven using ITF, uh, well used terms uh, and definitions. In the ITF, we do have a habit of um, sort of not necessarily reinventing terms, but 
but um, having um, slightly um, different interpretations. We, we, we already have had several discussions on the list in terms of things like entity versus node and uh, sort of agent versus proxy. So it's really about cleaning up the language. So anyone should be able to read this document and sort of uh, come to the, a similar conclusion. So at the start of the document, we really sort of have expanded the terminology section. We then start getting into the, TV, uh, the TVR sort of specific me mechanisms and capabilities in terms of intrinsic, extrinsic, visibility, locality, temporality, time variability, precision, periodicity, and so on and so forth. Then we kind of move into the ac uh, applicability of the contract of the, of the schedule itself. You're not specifically talking about uh, algorithmic uh, application or control plane uh, or mandating sort of mechanisms that would be used to um, uh, distribute uh, the schedule itself. But, but we are kind of thinking about that. And that's kind of towards the end of the document where we start looking at some of the control plane scenarios. Uh, we've expanded the routing section uh, looking at the control plane, of course, in terms of architecture, so centralized versus distributed, uh, but maybe something in between as well. I, I suppose that comes back to the, the earlier comment I had, which is let's try to sort of find some TBR use cases that are kind of near term. And with initial discussions, we found that some of the TBR use cases or scenarios are, are, are at scale, where you potentially have hundreds, thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of, of, of uh, uh, nodes, elements, entities. Uh, and that you know, may be sort of an IoT environment, maybe it's a mobile environment. And obviously that would have a significant impact if you were to use a, a distributed control plane, especially if there was uh, um, uh, several updates uh, per hour in terms of the schedule itself. So, so you know, we've started to think about the different scenarios at scale and implications uh, on the control plane. But again, the document doesn't define solution. It's just saying you know, potentially what the requirements are. Uh, I think I've kind of covered then um, most, <coughs> most of the updates. Uh, we, we, we have added some functional architecture just, just to make things a little bit cleaner and show the uh, functional components and then the interfaces between them. Obviously, I suppose we're only interested in external interfaces and then we can identify uh, a, a particular API. Uh, we, we did, I suppose it's my fault actually, I probably got overexcited with the document and started using conformance language, sort of writing the document almost as an implementation from an implementation perspective. Uh, and Tony um, sort of uh, highlighted the fact that this, this is informational, it's not standards track, so, uh, and it's certainly not an implementation guide, so we don't need to specifically state that something should be sort of should or must or um, et cetera. So we'll clean that up in the next version. We, we do need to kind of get some feedback from the working group on how we want to ultimately summarize the requirements. Are we just going to sort of distribute requirements across the various sections where they're relevant discussion? Or do we want to have a, a section towards the end of the document that simply states R1 through R24, you know, just randomly generating uh, several additional requirements there? Or, or maybe a combination of both. So having a set of core requirements and then maybe having requirements that are kind of use case specific. And then it goes back to sort of uh, resource efficiency, uh, operational, uh, et cetera. Um, I think actually, oops, uh, I think also we need to start thinking about some operational and security considerations. I've added a couple of uh, uh, bullets towards the end of this presentation that really talks about kind of security and, and uh, that's something that we really need to kind of think about. Uh, obviously some of this technology will be in an environment where it's maybe quite difficult uh, in terms of threat vectors. There are very few that, 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 that may apply to TVR, but of course, if you can um, attach through an orchestrator to a sort of managed entity, uh, or through the routing application, 
uh, then you, you can do great harm and we need to kind of reuse existing mechanisms that are maybe uh, applicable to, depending on the type of technology that we're going to use to actually exchange the uh, schedule itself. So this is the figure that I just alluded to. So it really just kind of shows in the context of the document, the different uh, elements that, that we're talking about. And uh, Tony also, I'm not trying to pick on Tony here, just made several uh, interesting observations that maybe we should reuse uh, uh, IETF technology for things like controller. Um, I think PC, PC was mentioned, but but actually I kind of initially thought, yeah, sure, why not? And then I kind of thought, well, actually that's solution specific, isn't it? it it's, you know, then we're sort of saying, well, potentially PSIP has a role to play and we also need some PSIP extensions. Uh, we could actually refer back to some SDNRG documentation that talks about sort of specific functions, whether something's an orchestrator or a super controller or a parent controller, or it doesn't, I suppose it doesn't really matter as long as we agree what the, um, the specific function and, and, and role is. Uh, but if you sort of disagree with the terminology that we're using, or you think there's a better expression, then you know, please obviously um, let us know. So as I uh, mentioned uh, a few moments ago, uh, we essentially, for our schedule visibility, we just you know, have this intrinsic and extrinsic, uh, and then you can think about this as sort of a centralized versus a distributed uh, approach as well. Uh, and in terms of sort of agent here, I think uh, proxy was a term uh, that we may want to use uh, instead. Uh, cool. I, th I think, you know, that, that now that we're also seeing some additional documents being pre presented indeed today, actually, um, from the LSR uh, group, the fact that there are vendors that are already looking at some implementation aspects of, T of TVR, this potentially can get very complex very quickly uh, when we're looking at the, the topology and potentially layering. If we use the LEO, I'm kind of breaking my own rule here by talking about a use case, which I thought we should maybe look at as a longer term use case rather than a short term use case, but let's stick with the LEO. Now add MEO, so essentially you have sort of two layers to your network. Maybe you're, you're sort of, you're connecting your LEO to your MEO or LEO to GEO. Uh, and now you have hierarchy um, of control layers and then that kind of adds a whole additional uh, level of complexity. Look, we have already looking around the room enough kind of control plane experts uh, and experience that maybe it's worthwhile at some point having a side discussion, maybe an interim session when we're kind of clear with some of the requirements where we can actually talk through some of the IGP implications and whether or not using OSPF or ISIS or some other mechanism is suitable. And then how do you address sort of the hierarchical um, scenarios and and even you know what is the role of PC from a, from a T perspective? Uh, and we can also think about the implications of um, scaling uh, and security as well. I think I unfortunately have the app, have the app at the fore. There you go. That. Great. Yeah. So uh, well done, Brian, Dan, Lewis, and our contributors. We are referring back to IETF technology wherever applicable. So these are essentially sort of our topology uh, terms. So I mentioned nodes, termination points, uh, link as well. And, and that was really important to us was to kind of reuse uh, uh, well-used sort of terms and expression. But of course, not to be confused with the fact that we have a TVR element, which is an entity as well. But this essentially is our graph. Uh, and uh, as I kind of already discussed, when we talk about a termination point, it may be physical, it may be logical as well. Um, you, we can certainly see examples where we've maybe got a VPN that is going to be available at a particular time um, in a particular location. But going back to that sort of nice use case of, of maybe charging a particular node through some solar cell, uh, we know that that node is going to be online at a particular time of day. 
Um, and, and maybe this sort of comes back to uh, the line of sight use case. Uh, maybe in terms of the horizon, there is some object that will be available uh, 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 or maybe a UAV is essentially going to be launched at a particular point in time and therefore uh, uh, something that we can expect in our schedule. Uh, cool. So we've got node, yeah, link, and um, of course, you know, there are dependencies between these elements as well. When we're um, thinking about some of the routing considerations and deployment scenarios, we also started thinking about, well, how do we, do we need to consider for some of the use cases that there may be a partial update? Or for certain scenarios, there may be a full update. So the full kind of schedule is going to be published. Uh, and what happens in that example I gave earlier, where you potentially have many thousands, tens of thousands of nodes that won't be implementing a full control plane. They won't have all of that protocol overhead or, or signaling capability. Uh, what you might have is sort of the some of the sort of the, the wireless technology where you've got sort of relatively dumb nodes that are talking to some kind of local node that has a bit more memory and CPU that's a controller, has controller capability. That's where you would exchange the the schedule to, and then you'll distribute that to your local nodes. Uh, and that that's sort of fairly typical for things like um, uh, airports, or campus networks, industrial networks, where maybe you, uh, you can actually find these networks are quite complex with many diameters uh, of layers as well. Uh, so that's, that's another kind of um, uh, aspect that we've considered. So not all entities will be fully capable of understanding um, the or, or, or running the protocols that would receive the schedule. Uh, of course, time synchronization will be critical for this. Uh, so that's, that's, again, without specifically stating what mechanism to use, we need to make it implicit that this uh, must be achieved, whether you use atomic clock on every device or you have some protocol mechanism that can actually ensure the time is synchronized. Uh, and then I just started thinking about uh, some of the security aspects as well. This, and and uh, I, again, we use existing mechanisms, but we don't have a security consideration section yet, but I, I feel it's, it's, it's very important. Even if it states there are several mechanisms and, uh, that we can use for um, particular threat vectors and scenarios, but we should also consider that uh, maybe some sanity checking would be required to make sure that, um, well, I don't know, actually, you know, if someone fat fingers and adds, a, you know, moves the decimal point, it potentially can cause great harm as well. And is, you know, is there going to be a mechanism that would sanity check a partial change um, in a particular um, schedule? Uh, good. Um, I suppose I've addressed these. So, yep, so it's an informational document, not standards track. Um, I don't see the harm in talking about maybe applicable technologies. Again, if we're looking at certain scenarios where they're sort of lightweight entities, then maybe a REST API, something like RESTConf may be applicable because you don't have all that state overhead <laughs> of NetConf. But then for devices, uh, entities where you might want to run multiple databases and have multiple configurations, candidate configuration versus kind of running configuration, you might use NetConf. So, but that's a device that has more CPU and memory. Uh, so we could maybe sort of have some discussion on the different scenarios. The, the use case documents doesn't go into that level of detail, um, but it, it may be worth sort of having some of that discussion in here as well. Uh, and then just in terms of kind of moving the work forward uh, and best practice, we are so sort of Lewis, uh, Brian and myself, we're big fans of GitHub, but actually there's kind of strengths and weaknesses of GitHub. What, what's tended to happen because we're using GitHub is that we're having discussion and we're queuing changes to the document and then sort of flushing and publishing a new document sort of just before the ITF. May, maybe what we need to do is, yes, continue to use GitHub because it's a great issue tracker. You can see sort of visibility into the, the mind's scary mind in some cases. 
of the authors and contributors of the document, but we'll, we'll, we'll take an action to kind of just publish interim versions of the document more frequently, rather than just having one new document just before each, each IETF. But we found, um, and thanks to Brian especially, that the automation tools of um, GitHub means that we can just use XML, we branch, make changes, um, uh, assign them to the other contributors and, and well, authors for review. And then once they're approved, it immediately goes back into the main XML document and it's generated so we can just submit it. It's very, very easy. But ideally, I think if the working group chairs are happy, we should have sort of a GitHub forward slash TVR working group and then stick. Uh, we can just move this repository directly across. And then if other um, working group documents also want to use the GitHub, then they're all located uh, in the same space. I can certainly chime yeah. in on that and say, yes, the chairs are open to creating a TVR uh, GitHub and then having everything be under those auspices. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. And uh, thanks, uh, sort of several comments in the last week or two, uh, uh, essentially, we've tried to adjust immediately on the list, as you might have seen, but we've also queued uh, updates as GitHub issues as well. So you can just see the pipeline of, of what's going to be addressed and, and potentially how it might be addressed as well. Uh, great. So in summary, with my final minute there, again, just thank you very much uh, to the new authors slash contributors of the document. Um, we are really interested in continuing the control plane implications of TBR, but as I kind of mentioned, it may be worth kind of having that as a focus session with some kind of scope, or maybe it's too early and we just sort of continue to have that discussion within TBR, but it, it seems like we might be worth kind of synchronizing um, at some point. Uh, and, we may also want to start thinking about um, verification uh, and um, identity management for the schedule um, as well. And that's, that's something that's not discussed in the use case document. So we're kind of maybe we're going to be driving some input now for the use case document itself. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's nine seconds left ahead oh, of schedule. And, and we have some time built in for discussion. Cool. So, uh, so, so briefly, uh, Thank you, and very good to see this edition of Schedule Identity and Verification. Uh, I wanted to just bring up uh, two points that were made in the chat while we were going through. Uh, one was that if we were to use SDN language, uh, mm. we should not use uh, or reinvent new SDN language. Uh, so it was pointed out that there are RFCs that, that define you know, controllers and things like that, and we should- There is, yeah. In the, in the SDNRG, we, we have a document that, that defines that quite nicely, so I can refer to that. There, there's also a, a significant discussion in the chat relating to the nature of the management plane and mm -hmm. uh, whether uh, centralized versus distributed uh, controllers are, are being considered here. Yeah. I know that there was a section on, on distributed controllers, but- uh, are there thoughts on the nature of controllers as whether they must be centralized? Uh, not yet, not yet. Uh, it's, it's, a really, it's a really interesting problem and, and it's something we've discussed just for sort of traffic engineering and network optimization in general, but with the time element, it gives this, this additional dimension. And with sort of federated environments, multi-domain, hierarchical, you know, sort of parent controller, child controllers, suddenly you start getting into cap theorem um, problems in terms of partition tolerance, availability of data and data consistency. Uh, I'm really happy that it's maybe time that we kind of have this discussion, but we just need to be careful that some of this is theoretical and is not going to be deployed in the short term. Uh, so we might want to focus on sort of the near term, but not preclude you know, potential solution architecture um, that might be relevant for the future. Sure. And, and we do have uh, several folks in the queue, uh, starting with uh, Zaki. So this is Zaki from Tsinghua University. And thank you very much for this nice talk. And I just have two questions about this draft. The first mm -hmm. one is, I think uh, maybe routing is based on the addressing first. You, you have to know the address of each node, then you can calculate the path, right? Mm -hmm. So do you think addressing is still an 
very important uh, challenge or requirement in this time vary network because the nodes are changing their location in the mm -hmm. network. Uh, for example, if you use IP address, then we don't know if we, we you know that if we, the node change its location, mm -hmm. then the subnet will change. And do we still need to update the address first? Yeah, so, it's, it's a particular scenario um, for some use cases, but it's not something we would address directly in the requirements document, I think. Okay. I think it, it's part of the, of the control plane discussion. But you, we can make it clear that there may be scenarios where the IP address is used as an identifier and mm -hmm. maybe maybe not in some cases. Maybe you, we're not using IP. Um, and, but you still want to have a contract. You still want to essentially say that this node will be online at a particular time or an interface. Yeah, I see. Thank you. So my second question is that when you just mentioned the security, pressure, security problem mm -hmm. and you mentioned that uh, maybe we can use some existing mechanisms to address these problems. So do you think there are any uh, new security problems due to the unique characteristic of the time very network? For example, because the dynamic, some existing security mechanism may not work if possible. How do you think that? Yeah, um, I think it's maybe a little early to say that there are definitely gaps that we, we don't have the tooling currently in the IETF, but because it's kind of a, a new dimension for yeah. our networks, you know, sort of time hasn't been something we are, you, essentially we've had in sort of control plane and management necessarily, um, and certainly not in the control plane. It's something that's coming, being introduced now. There's a side meeting, I think, tomorrow uh, oh. with some ops area work as well. Uh, it's something that maybe applies to some of this other work mm -hmm. uh, as well. But I could definitely see there are some new threat vectors. You know, yeah. if you were to modify mm -hmm. a clock, maybe a physical clock that's attached to a particular device, if it's a clock that's being used to then disseminate or synchronize time with other uh, 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 nodes or entities in the network, that, that's, that, that's a really interesting kind of threat vector and something that we need to consider. Whether or not you need maybe a mechanism where you're receiving clock information from one um, source, but actually you have a backup source as well that you, in order to um, actually uh, compare, uh, might be uh, maybe uh, something to consider as well. Okay, well, so thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I think I heard in your presentation you mentioned that uh, uh, you may, uh, or, or, uh, per uh, per uh, draft or per uh, uh, TVR uh, you may not specify the synchronization uh, uh, synchronization uh, mechanism. And I think uh, usually in the TVR, we are dependent on the time synchronization. Everything uh, should be synchronized, especially for the distributed and the hybrid network. So uh, I would like your respond on this, please. Oh, OK. So maybe um, maybe I, I wasn't clear, but essentially, yes, you know, we need to ensure that a device's clock um, is accurate in order to apply the schedule. The actual mechanism in order to do that, whether it's sort of NTP or, or some other me mechanism or sort of through a particular API, just something we didn't think we needed to specify in this document. But, but, but maybe what we should do is just say there are examples of how the time could be synchronized across a network. And these include um, and of course, maybe using some um, ITF techniques, but not uh, limited to. Yes, I mean, I meant uh, it, it will be nice if we mentioned that uh, uh, it's important to specify that uh, synchronization mechanism to to to, to be uh, if 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 we don't uh, let's say if uh, one TVR protocol doesn't need some kind of uh, uh, specification, it should mention that. Uh, if if uh, we can, because usually a uh, TVR is time dependent, it, it should be synchronized. If there is a, a, a way in such protocol, uh, it may use two mechanisms. It should mention that. So uh, any it, it's like we, we uh, any protocol has some dependencies and has 
uh, it's usually we would like it to be independent, but uh, we should specify if this uh, TVR, is it dependent or independent mm -hmm. regarding some sick, sick, uh, special, let's say, uh, uh, control, let's say, control plane mechanism, if there is some kind of management already included, so we may say it, this protocol is... Uh, so if it, I think uh, the time uh, is uh, very important in all protocols that we are in the future will think about. So, yep. uh, so if, if this uh, draft mentions this or uh, discuss this, or we may discuss this more further, uh, I think it will be a, a good start point also for all future uh, protocols. I completely, I completely agree, and and and, and um, in terms of the time horizon as well, you, you, there there are sort of. It's not sort of diametrically opposed, but there's certainly a broad spectrum uh, that 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 needs to be uh, uh, that the that the whatever solution what we have is capable of solving and and sort of deep space maybe on the order of your know, months or even years, um, whereas some of the t sort of terrestrial examples may be in terms of minutes and hours. Cool. Thank you. And I, I will just say, in the interest of time, I, I have locked the queue. But but for the remaining questions, if we could keep them. Uh, focused. Right. Great job. Thank you very much for the uh, draft. A uh, couple of uh, observation comments. Uh, first of all, like the, uh, uh, when we go through this uh, schedule based routing, uh, there's a need actually to back off from that schedule. Mm -hmm. If, for example, this type of thing doesn't exist in, in regular networks, mm -hmm. uh, when something happens, we distribute that through the network, but this time you're telling the nodes that this is the schedule. Right, so it's imperative to actually make sure that we can actually back off from that schedule and tell any, everybody that you know, hey, this thing that didn't happen, what's supposed to happen, did not happen. Yeah, yeah, and, and and that again, that kind of comes back to sort of maybe applicability of some high tech technology that's very good. Right. Um, you know, where you want to use maybe netconf uh, versus restconf. Right. So something probably you might want to, you know, mention it within the. No, great, great. And, and, and um, look, there's some really good comments coming across the mic here, and you are very welcome to propose text. Uh, sure. Your comments were awesome. Thank you very much. But we love text. I'll, I'll do that. Right. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, uh, is about the resolution of, uh, of the schedule itself. Mm -hmm. Depending on the scenario, the resolution can actually vary, and it becomes very important. As probably you mentioned that somewhere in the, in the draft that actually Take a look at the meals, for example. Yeah. Uh, well, the resolution that you take is basically a, a, a function of the size of the uh, constellation. Mm -hmm. Really. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and and if I pick up the resolution too too wide, then I will be always behind the queue. Yeah. And if I actually take it too too you know too 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 uh, precise, uh, then my my, uh, my 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 forwarding table will never converge. Yeah, and that that kind of that brings brings us on to this has, this bullet here, which is if if you if you've got a TE network and you want to calculate a path and you're actually using some schedule information in order to do that, but you don't have enough state memory CPU or you've got a very slow algorithm, right. do you need to consider that computation time potentially has a lag as well? Uh, and, and with free space optics, sometimes when you're steering in the, for the ISL links, essentially it, it can take several minutes mm -hmm. uh, to steer from one uh, degree to the next, well, right. to several others. Yeah. And one last comment uh, quickly to the gentleman who was on the, uh, the mic. Absolutely, the addressing yeah. is basically depends on the type of scenario. Mm -hmm. right? If you're going on a terrestrial network, the addressing can definitely stay IP. Yeah. Uh, I don't think any, uh, there is any issue with, with using IP as an addressing, but if you go up there into the space, then we can actually start opening the discussion for different type of apps, maybe. Especially uh, with transparent exactly. nodes, yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Next customer. Hey, uh, James. Hi. Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you now. OK. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, this is Jing Wang from China Mobile. I'm the contributor of this draft. Uh, I think uh, schedule of time variant uh, interval changes are in response to changes in entities' uh, properties. For example, when the entities in the system change, uh, the schedule may not be optimal, and we need to update the schedule. 
uh, we can discuss this in detail in future. Uh, thanks. Yeah, I, I, and that's a that's a really nice uh, problem. I think it's a problem because this, for me, and maybe I've just got a sort of malicious or suspicious mind, but this looks like a great way of sort of attacking the network. Um, if you've got the capability to actually start making changes on a node that then get flushed or an entity uh, and propagated throughout the rest of the network, you can do some real damage. Uh, so maybe we need to think about the mechanisms and tools that would actually stop that or maybe like a hold off. Um, it, it, yeah, we, you, we, we really need to kind of c consider this. I think it, it potentially has the potential to do huge harm, but on the flip side, it's probably necessary for some use cases. Hi, and, and lastly, uh, Lee. Yeah, uh, thanks for your <coughs> presentation. And I have confusion about the uh, intrinsic strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, because if uh, the intrinsic strategy means that the cellular partners are in, uh, integrated in the algorithm. Mm -hmm. So I, want, I, want, I wonder whether the, there is a need for the managing devices to advertise the schedulers to the managed uh, devices. Yeah, yeah. I think it depends whether or not the device itself is capable of getting the schedule and time information from its neighbor, yeah. or if it yeah. needs like an agent or proxy to provide um, the schedule. Uh, and what what we can do with this document is maybe come up with some examples, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. May, or maybe uh, detail them in the use case document that actually show for some set scenarios you learn it intrinsically from your neighbor uh, and in others you learn it through some kind of management agent uh, a, a particular node in your domain that can talk directly to whatever's assigning the schedule and then propagate it through some mechanism to its locally uh, attached nodes or entities okay thank you yes and, yeah, and uh, lee is also a contributor now as well so thank you very, very yeah, much thank you all right uh, thank you so much for the presentation and the discussion uh, next up, uh, we're going to have a presentation on the use cases uh, document. And with Ying Zhang as our presenter. Good morning. Uh Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Ying Zheng Xu. So uh, I'm going to present an update of the use case document uh, on behalf of my co-authors. So we, we have presented the use case document several times. So this time, I'll just focus on the update. So hopefully, it'll be quick. OK, so uh, currently, uh, we have three categories of use case in the document. Uh, one major change based on the comments we received last time is for the third category, we changed the uh, title from mobile devices to dynamic reachability. And for these three categories of use cases, um, the major work we did is more editorial changes, try to add uh, make clarifications, more wording change to make sure that um, it's clear to everybody. So just a quick summary, uh, resource pre preservation is basically we, for the network where nodes may have power constraint, something like um, you, if it's runs on a battery based on thermal, whatever, so it may have a schedule to power link or power node off and that will cause the network topology change. And for operation efficiency, it might be related with the cost. But the, the thing is, it, it should be schedule based. We can use a schedule to abstract uh, the network change. And for dynamic reachability, you know, that's I think is the very original use case that this working group is targeting. And it is also, you know, for TVR, we have to be able to describe the change based on a schedule. So for the um, detailed use case, we added the major change in this version of the document is based on the uh, comments we received last time. We added, added a title network 
into our operating efficiency example. So that's where the network topology change is caused by the traffic pattern. Typical example is you have a campus network. Your traffic may, the, the, the daytime traffic and nighttime traffic pattern are very much different. And that may cause your network topology change. And the second example we added to the dynamic visibility is the predictable, like a moving of, um, for example, trains or cruise ships. So you, they sort of like a, you can think it's moving on a track. So you know ex you are expecting uh, where the location is at what time. So that's the detail of those two examples we added. And the biggest change for this version of the document is we actually added a problem statement section. And thanks to Rick for providing his original problem statement for TBR. And of course, we, we made some changes, but the, the, the baseline is pretty much the same. So uh, the problem to solve is we need to be able to define a schedule, right? And then, so right now the working group is targeting to use a young model to define the schedule. And then we will need to work with the um, domain our protocol expert for the distribution of the schedule and then really the executing of the schedule. And so everybody is welcome to review the document. We want to make sure we get the wording right, it's clear and to everybody not, not gonna cause any confusion. And that's pretty much it. And we welcome any review and comments. And I think um, so far, since we already done several rounds of the presentation of this document, I want to ask the working group whether you think we are ready for a last call. So uh, we certainly have uh, this document as uh, in our milestones being completed uh, this month. Uh, so it, it seems like a good time to, to consider a working group last call. Uh, what, I, what I would ask uh, uh, right now is, is there anyone that has read the document that has uh, concerns about the completeness of the document? Wonder if, if hmm, maybe by either a uh, show of hands or uh, my apologies as I don't fully understand the, is the e show of hands tool under admin? I'm not sure where the show of hands tool is in the new client. Uh, oh, there it is, okay. Um, if we do a quick show of hands, what I'd like to understand is who has read the most recent uh, draft, just to, to see uh, how much it has, has gotten through. But let's, let's also do it uh, online. Uh, right. so, so we have started that. If you have read it, please let me know. If you have, if you have not read it, uh, would certainly be good to, to read it before we. Yeah, but you, you know, if you do the last call, that will trigger some reviews, of, right? <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. All right. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right. Uh, so, uh, so thank you very much. It, it looks like uh, a about 20% of the working group has, has taken a look through the, the most recent draft. Uh, what I would say is if there are any concerns after having read it, uh, please post it to the mailing list. And otherwise, uh, if we don't hear any significant concerns, we are probably ready for working group last call. All right. Uh, then uh, you will be staying with us uh, yeah. to talk about uh, the Yang model. That is schedule Yang. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. Um, so this is the Yang data model 
for the scheduled attribute. Um, so remember last IETF, we had two young presentations, uh, one for the sort of like a device model, and the second one, if you think about it, it's more like a service model. So based on the working group suggestions and the authors of these two drafts to work together, and we merge the document based on the working group feedback. So uh, the authors get got together and have had several meetings talk about uh, how we merge the draft. Uh, so um, right now the the design of the module we currently have three modules in this draft. We have a common module that defines the schedule, and then we have a TVR node young module. That's the um, device model is designed to manage a single node with scheduled attributes. That's why we call it a device model. You can use it to configure a router with schedules. And then we have the TVR topology young module. That's to describe a network topology with time variant attributes. Um, that, that's what we consider as a service module. So the TVR schedule young module defines the common grouping for schedule. Uh, if you, this one shows the tree, act, tree structure of the module, you can think, see that we simplified the start daytime, start time and end time a little bit. We remove the always option because for the end time we do have the infinite um, option. So that sort of get the always covered. And we still have the recurrence that spec specifies the repetition pattern of a schedule. So for example, you have a weekly schedule, you can just keep it going on for a year or something. And then um, for the base schedule, we have right now an empty container where it's meant to be augmented for detailed attributes. For example, you may have your bandwidth cost that varies based on the schedule, or you may have just like a link on and off based on the schedule. So basically whatever attributes you want to have this time variant attributes, you can augment it in these containers. And this is the TVR node.yang. So this is a device model is meant to used to configure a node or router with a scheduled attributes. So what we have in this module currently, we have, um, you know, the router ID is to specify, identify a router. And then we have the, uh, right now we have the power schedule. So basically that's to um, schedule of whether the router will be powered on or off. So it's a list of schedule. Um, and so far that's the only thing defined in this module. The reason it, I'll ho hold on to the reason. So uh, for the topology young module, right, right now, um, that's pretty much what we defined. We have the topology that lists the net, uh, number of nodes in the network. And for the, also the links in the network, like from which one node, from the south node to the destination node. But the link is identified by the south node and the, the link ID on the south node. And the module has a list of nodes. And we choose not to augment the network um, element module. That's the, the one defined in RFC 8530. So that, uh, for this one, so that actually bring us to the discussing point. So um, we actually, right now, we choose not to augmenting the existing models because we want to eliminate implementation and deployment dependencies. Because if you are augmenting certain model, right, you are using the uh, 
augmenting the links, for example, in the existing model, you will need to implement that model first. And also the another point to discuss is uh, later we figure out, um, you know, Adrian, Adrian Ferris and the email mentioned that uh, the ACL model actually already have a schedule, some sort of schedule defined. So we actually have a meeting scheduled with the authors from that draft to look at the possibility of whether we can collaborate to look at the schedule together. And uh, Besides that, we have an example in the appendix, the, a way to augment a uh, routing protocol, for example, but that's in appendix. Because we, this exactly how the protocol react to it, how it's up to the protocol, right? So, but um, we need to get this augment, whether or not to augmenting existing model result first. Yeah, so we want the working group to you know, to say whether this is the right approach or not. And, and let's take a, a pause there because I, I, I do know that we've had two people join the queue and, and maybe that goes back to a, to a few slides before we get too far forward. Uh, so, Rick? Uh, uh, well, I, I'm actually, I think that's that. So, um, hold on, let me put it here, yeah. Uh, so I think the slide before you had something about power. And I just wanted to, to raise a question. I understand that being able to report power is quite useful, but isn't what you're saying here in this particular example that during this schedule, the router is unavailable to perform forwarding or perform routing in some way. So the, the fact that it's not powered is the cause of its ability to not actually be able to, to forward data. I, it strikes me that within a within a Yang model which talks about prime <coughs> variant routing, the value shouldn't be whether it's powered or not, it's whether it can route or not, because there are other reasons why something might not be able to route that aren't power. Um, I can think of use cases where radio receivers, uh, radio systems may be in receive only mode. So the device is powered, but it's unable to route, uh, except across bizarre unidirectional links. But um, I think as a, a, I think we're mashing the use case of, of yeah, there are power constrained devices and there are devices where there are power schedules that affect the ability to route. But I think in the Yang model, we need to be a little bit more logical about this and say, the, the option here is we are unable to route, not we don't have power. Sorry, semantics, I understand. Uh yeah, I agree with you. So uh, from routing protocols point of view, so typical example, if you have an IP interface, right? Yeah. But your OSPF is now running on the, this interface. So to OSPF, this interface is now enabled. Or you can enable an OSPF protocol. You can still say uh, OSPF shutdown. So that interface to OSPF is not routing mm -hmm. traffic, but the interface is up, right? Basically, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I suppose my proposal would be that list power schedule uh -huh. could be list functioning schedule. So your 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 boolean is is it functioning? Uh -huh. Whether so, it's not functioning because of power or because of some other reason is is isn't important. You're looking at the schedule of when this is functional. So we are sort of actually targeting this one. It's really power on and off. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so we, you know, we, because we, we want to communicate with the community whether this is the right approach or not. You know, we choose to be stand alone, the module instead of augmenting existing, like for example, the network topology model, mm -hmm. or the, the, the device module we have, the LNE module, right? the logical network element module. Hmm. But later, if the working group say, okay, well, this is the right approach, we don't want to be depending on other modules. We will actually 
expand the list, add more attributes. But we want to make sure it's the right approach first before we go too far. I completely right? agree with the approach. Yeah. I, and I support the approach. I, sorry, it was a, it was a very much a nitpick that, that yeah, that's how and, I think is not quite the right thing. Yeah. So, of course, on a router, you, you don't want to just have the power of this the entire router. You want to have like links on these routers, right? But that's next step. We want to make sure it's the right approach first before we go too far. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Thanks for the uh, good job. I just want to see your point, Rick. And I would say that, you know, you need probably to, to capture this and add the reason for something like an error code or something like that underneath the XML to say, okay, so if this thing basically is not routing, this is the reason for it. Or, or the dot to be routing. Right, exactly, yeah. 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 yeah, but we can actually have, you know, is it because of the power? Is it because of, the, you know, the interface is down? Is it because, like, you know, something like that. We can augment that piece of, you know, the XML or like the, the young model to, to actually be more expressive in terms of, you know, why the, the reason is. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. This. Right. But 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 com configuration. If you are. You, you you can have later. We we will have really um expand the model later. That's the operation state. You can say that what's the reason for this? Uh, sure. Not yeah. optional. Yeah. But yeah. if you are talking about routing protocol to an abstract level, I don't know what's. I don't care exactly what your reason is. If I cannot route traffic, I cannot route traffic. Whether so, you because of your yeah. electricity or because your link is broken, that's. So this, this is actually nicely leading me to, to my next question is that uh -huh. you know, what is the what is the uh, Let's get closer to the mic. Yeah, what is the relationship between this and the operation? Like you know, do we actually going to distribute this type of things between the uh, the, the network? So right now this one is to define the schedule, right? So right. if you look at the problem statement, that's that's our first step. We we need to define the schedule. And the second step about the distribution of the schedule. If right. you want, let's say, make ICP work, any routing protocol work with it, whether it's up to use ICP to, to distribute, uh, you know, the after ICP get this schedule, what the ICP will do, whether it's to distribute in ICP, that's a separate problem. Right, okay. It's right. not meant to be re resolved in this model. Right. This model is all about schedule. Gotcha, yeah. thank you. Hi, Lou Berger. Uh, I, I think you have separable questions here. One is, do you want a whole new um, uh, module mm -hmm. to uh, provide schedule, or do you want to augment a different module to give you the results? That's one question. Another question is, what elements do you want to include in, if you choose to do a standalone one? Uh -huh. uh, what elements do you want to include in that standalone one? And you've defined one grouping for uh, schedule, but then you start defining your own elements within that, the, the parameters of the link, um, you could reuse something like TE info, TE link info, I think that's uh, defined. But, yeah, that will But that's correct. not, the, I'm not saying the whole module, I'm just uh -huh. saying the grouping. And if you don't use that grouping, you should go look there and make sure you got all the same elements covered. Because there's pieces here that are not. Yeah. Uh, so, um, one major issue if we choose to be standalone is, you know, because we define all these modules about ourselves, right? Well, there's so, nothing that's truly so, standalone. I think you're saying a new module, right? Right. And when you, so for example, when you use um, in OSPF or any protocol or by TE, right? So you, you will have to be able to refer, right now we don't have like a direct way to match exactly so for example the link id in the topology defined this one actually defines the topology model so we we, we cannot do an exact reference not like a leaf right right that sort of thing so so you we, you could go um, we can only you, you can go augment te topology with the time with your schedule element uh -huh. and pretty much have the same thing but then as you said you have the baggage of that whole model, right? And so we are uh, you know, that may be too much. TE topology to use this module to augment TE topology. You can augment TE topology and add in the schedule, right? That that's an option, right? And I understand. I understand you're choosing not to because you don't want the baggage of TE topology and the TE modules are exactly. massive. And I understand that comment, uh -huh. but I'm just saying that 
that decision is separable from using groupings, existing groupings. Uh -huh. And if you choose to do something completely independent, make sure you include all the information that is in th those groupings. That I totally I agree. That need to be consistent. Otherwise, later, exactly. yeah. Exactly. And, and, or, or you're going to miss something. For example, I don't believe you have everything that is in the, uh, the TE link. And I, you're going to end up needing that eventually. You know, for the topology right model, right now we do use some information from the T module. Some. Yeah. But what would the, the goal go back the check. goal in the end we will have to keep them consistent. Otherwise they later they become unusable. I and, agree. And I think it's completely reasonable to ask in the working group standalone or augmenting or, or augmenting. Uh -huh. And then if taking the standalone, how, what's the methodology to build that standalone? Because you again can take groupings from other uh, modules. Uh, thank you for the good summary. That's the question. The whole objective of this presentation is the working group want to do standalone or augmenting existing models. I see you want to say something. I think, I think I'm next. I don't know. They're yeah. pretty close. Uh, AC Lind yeah. I that this was responding way back to that 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 power, that is power of the no. We wanted to do a simple case. If we were gonna do something like you were talking about where we wouldn't be routing, where we'd be non-transit, that would be a different case, a different right. schedule. And regarding the TE topology, I'd like, you know, the deployments of the TE topology model to step forward. That's what I thought, anyway. <laughs> Any, anyway, but we can look at we can look at the groupings to see what yeah, what things what of that vast tree is actually useful. Yeah, we yeah. can look at the groupings, but the chance of us augmenting the T module is teeny tiny. <laughs> so I'm just going to come back to AC on this one, and I think the question and the reason I disagree with you goes back to what is the scope of the topology, Yang? And, and ignoring the augment or whatever, I think that's a very valid question. And my, I think I say augment. But is the purpose of the schedule to say when you can and cannot transit traffic through your... Uh, when, when, uh, when do parts of your topology work or not work? Or is it to talk about the the function of the devices that make up that topology. And I think those are two very different questions. And I think if we start to drift into, so well, we've got a schedule for example, when the, the red example, light comes on. The example we had was the last one. If you want to do the other one, that's a, that's a different example. That'd be a different thing to do. Schedule. Yeah. 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 So I think that's fundamental to understanding so, what we're trying to do in TV. Yeah, yeah. I, I think what I mean, you two are saying, they, they don't. Yeah, they don't conflict with each other. You know, this uh, one no, right I mean, now we only have I mean, the simple the one. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 no, no, I understand. I, I, but I, just I, to jump in yeah, uh, uh, on the chat, time. people can't hear you if you're not at the mic. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just just to reiterate, my my point is, I understand the description. I understand exactly what you mean by that. That's fine. My question is whether it is the correct property to be talking about within the scope of a topology change schedule. I'll give you an example of something which I think should not be in there, but I could put in there using your paradigm, which is I could say the blinking green light is on between nine in the morning and seven at night. That makes no difference to the topology as far as moving data around is concerned, but it's a schedulable thing. So my question is, is the purpose of this Yang module to talk about the topology for the moving of data, or is it to talk about the scheduling of things? And I think we need to be really clear about, or maybe perhaps I just missed this point, but what is the purpose of the schedule? Because this is, I know this is the node module, but I see it as part of TVR, topology, I, I, and this is where I get confused, and I think we need to be really careful, or we'll end up with Yang models that are a big bag of everything. 
and, th and that's my question. Okay, so um, I'll try to answer if I see right that I understand your question right, right? So right now for the uh, node module, right? We only have the simple one for just for node power on and off. And so for current OSPF, the, the example we're using here, OSPF cannot use that yeah. information. So we are actually all just using the schedule defined and we are all changing the link cost with the schedule cost. You can see we are yeah. augmenting the empty container with the cost and we are um, augmenting the interface. You look at this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, so right now, if the the what the topology, uh, I I mean the schedule module only have the power and on and off, OSPF cannot directly use it yet. So we are not there yet. So today the big biggest question is whether we want to do standalone module or we want to do augmentations. And then for the later when the when we really write the model. So when this model is about to finish, you will see this have more list of attributes. So different things can use, you know, pick whatever they want to use. Okay, so I I understand mm -hmm. the approach and I I yes. Mm -hmm. And I think my problem mm -hmm. is why I think augmentation is the way forwards. Because if you develop a node schedule yang module mm -hmm. where you start to add every single potential property of every type of node as part of that schedule within that module rather than saying here is a schedule for things which can change on a node so, go see elsewhere for what those things are is much better idea uh, to my understanding this is more related with um how do I say it? more like a physical link property instead of uh, you know if your link is you know, if we have link up and down event right mm -hmm. so when your link is done OSPF link is done for sure but when your link is up whether the OSPF link is up or not that's up to OSPF yeah yeah that I agree with yeah but if your link, I, a physical link is done, no way OSPF interface is functioning. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, so I think there are two discussions, and we're 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 talking about the two different. We're talking about two different things in this discussion. Uh -huh. I agree with you for for that point. I think my my question is, what is the nature of the things which can be described as part of a schedule for a node? Uh huh. Irrelevant we, of, of we, how they're used. My by understanding use. is we will be able to describe a link, whether the link is functioning or not. But we are now going to describe OSPF is functioning or not. OSPF interface is functioning mm -hmm. or not. But using my colored light example, so uh -huh. the LED I want to, I want to schedule uh -huh. has no importance for OSPF. But does that mean I use the TVR node schedule model to define my special LED? Or is that go away and write your own Yang model we, about we, LEDs? We, we cannot <laughs> define on all those, uh, your LED is going all right. Those yeah. are, it has to be to a certain abstract level down to the, yeah. And, and that level of abstraction is my question. I don't know what the answer is, to, but to we my must understanding know what that level is. It's up to the router is on and off, link is on and off. Those are critical parts. So Perfect. it's because of whether your LED is on, your, your yeah. LED might be broken, but your link is still on. So I don't really care about your LED light. Per exactly, yeah. and I don't either, and uh -huh. therefore I would, you know, to me, it really, is your it's your link up or it's not? It's you know, it's the LED does not exist within here to make topology changing events, right. and this exactly. is the so I really it. don't care about your LED. Is that that you and I agree on this? Uh -huh. Is that documented anywhere? 
And do we have rough consensus that, that we're talking about things which affect the ability to move data and not any old random stuff I want to put in a schedule? And is that correct? Okay, point taken. There's another use case here. Yeah. Just because it's not this use case doesn't mean it's wrong. Yeah. Right, okay. So, and, and, but the bigger question is whether we want to augment this or have a immediately deployable uh, Yang model that has what's needed in it. Talking about the OSPF augmentation here was probably wrong because it confuses people. That actually does augment the OSPF module, which is really close to the, uh, although not too many people have, or I don't know of anybody who's, who's implemented the right. OSPF that, or any of the IETF models completely, completely, but at least we can be, uh, uh, we can, w w in looking at like, for instance, open, open config, you can see that they copied part of it without attribution. So, so there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of similarities. So, so, so that talking about that one, cause that is an augmentation of an existing model and for a very obvious use case. We thought this power was an obvious use case, but the one about uh, availability, you know, is this available or not? You're talking about, that's a different use case that we would, I mean, and maybe, and maybe it's a more relevant use case, which I think you were getting at. We yeah, could add that. We could add that one too. Yeah, we. we, we but, that's our next step. Yeah, but I think the bigger question is, do we want, from this working group, a concise, immediately deployable model, or, I mean, we looked at the pages and pages of tree for that topology module, and we said, nobody's ever going to do this if we put it in here. The the T. Why is it? Are you saying there are deployment of the T but, model? I, I think that's irrelevant to this working group. Yeah. <laughs> but, but if we choose if to you want, augment If you want to have discussions on that, come to T's and we're yeah. on Friday. And yeah, we'll but if we are it. augmenting T model, that put us a depending, dependency. So I don't mind jumping Q, but I just want to recognize that I'm I, third in Q. I don't know if the first two people who are both chairs want to let me jump in as participant or. I, why, why don't we go just in order, if you don't mind standing not for, at all. for a moment. Uh, so so thank you for the discussion. Uh, and and thank you, Rick, for, for the, the point of what are we modeling. Uh, my, my question with chair hat off is we have a requirements document uh, that we are working on. And I would uh, perhaps expect that the things that we are modeling here have some traceability into the requirements uh, coming out of the requirements document. Uh, if we trace things to the requirements document, does that help us answer the question of whether we are modeling things that matter to TVR? Um, yeah. I, I mean, otherwise, why, why have a requirements document? Yeah, of course, so, oh, the, the model should be very much related with the requirement, be based on the requirement, right? Yeah, uh, the, I, I agree. The, yeah. the other quick question I have based on the comments that came up was, what is an immediately deployable model? And is there a timeline we're unaware of? Uh, that goes back to whether we want to be a standalone model or we want to do augmentation. Okay. That's very much related. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Tony? Thank you. Uh, chair hat on to answer Rick's question. If you take a look at the charter, you will find that our charter says we should work on routing, not LEDs. Um, that said, <laughs> the grouping that you showed previously, back up one slide, um, if somebody wanted to schedule their LEDs, that grouping should be just fine for doing exactly that. And one might go ahead and amend things in the interface, or if it's an LED on a card, maybe somewhere in the hardware model. Um, that's something that should be reusable. Yeah. At this moment, we have no intention to do any LED related status. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your patience, Lou. Uh, go ahead. So I think Tony stole some of my thunder because I was going to say, let's go back to the, the grouping. 
Uh, I think where the conversation has gone is, is that there's interest in a pared down uh, module that uh, is um, you know, very focused on schedule. That's great. But I think we're, the conversation and the example show that there's a clear use case for having a grouping that, is, that can be easily incorporated into other modules so that we can attach the schedule to anything that we'd like. And as is always the case, the market will decide which one is the more interesting one. And that's yeah, why I'm saying exactly. I don't really care about arguing about whether we augment T topology or not. Those people that want to augment T topology can because yeah. you've given them the right grouping. So I, I, the, that's the part of the reason I actually chose this more basic one, the logical network element. So we, we, we are not augmenting this, but we try to keep the information consistent. So yeah, my only question, and I, I, I should have the answer to it, but I can't decide on so both wait, sides, wait. is whether or not the grouping should be in its own module. And that, so that's sort of, that's, that's actually let, what I'm grappling with. Let me ask with. you this way. What, what's your preference? You want to have them alone? I can argue it both ways, so I haven't come to a conclusion. Okay. I'm sort of leaning towards um, having it in its own module uh, because then it's more easily reusable. Yeah, that that's, said, that's technically you can reuse it even if it's not in its own module. It's just a little uglier. So I, I, I guess I'm right now I'm leaning a little bit towards module uh, its own module, but I, I, I'm not going to say that's like a hard and fast argument. So the, the authors had discussions, debate among ourselves, right? Whether we want to do augmentation or we want to be standalone. In, in, the, in the end, we, we, we turn. And I'm not way. arguing that. I'm saying yeah. there's clearly a use case or there's people who want to have a standalone. That's great. Go do your standalone. But that doesn't preclude having a solid definition of a schedule grouping which then can be brought in as an augmentation into other modules. I'm saying do that too. Okay. And the question I have still, and I don't have yeah, a, a strong a answer for module. it, is should I that be its own module? It's all part of the same model. Uh, I know we have these two words that are almost identical, but, but it, it goes in the you. same document, it becomes same part of the same Yang model, but it might still be two modules. You ask. Uh, we, we have other, like the TE types is a Yang module that is only composed of groupings. We are actually using the TE types. Yeah, yeah so you're familiar that's with just that. the definition. So you we'll might have that. your your TVR model might have two Yang modules, one of which only has a grouping. One of them only have it, It's possible. Yeah. I, I think we can take it to the list. Yes. Um, so you are saying some of the augmentation to the modules, we can have the module also included in this document, but they are separate modules. I agree. Yeah, Pawan Biram, uh, probably going to repeat what Lou said. Uh, we do have a fair number of topology models out there. There's the base model is 8345. I don't know why you're pointing to 8530 here, but the base topology model is 8345. You could have just used that. That just defines the nodes and the links. And then there are various uh, variants of T topology. There's L3 T topology, there's SRT topology. There are in Opsid AWG folks who are uh, presenting OSP of topology, SS topology, right? So uh -huh. I would say just define a grouping with the schedule that can then be inserted by any uh, topology that uh, is of interest to folks. Uh, it's uh, yeah, so that basically will be something like this, right? That's choose to use the schedule defined by the TVR common schedule. And then, but we can, um, you, you some may... of the modules, some of these augmentations we can include in this draft, but we may not be able to do, we, we won't be able to do all of them, right? That's fair enough. Yeah. So the important, the key thing is to just define the grouping and let Right. Uh, whoever is interested in the specific yeah, whoever is interested, it. just yeah. use them. We'll make them usable. Like um, if it's TE related attributes, like uh, Lou suggested, we want to make sure those groupings stay consistent. So at the bare minimum, like AC was saying, if the intent here is to get like faster deployment, uh, yeah. I would suggest just doing uh, using RSA 345, the base network topology model, specify that, define the grouping, specify 8345 augmentation and leave the rest to uh, the other topology, uh, other models. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, Luber, again, I, I, I agree. You don't have to go do all the augmentations in this document. No way we can do all. That'll just slow everything down. Right. So, any more? Okay, um, based on the discussion so far, I think we have no objections to do standalone mod model. Any objections? So yeah, we'll, of course we'll try to make, make use of the existing groupings definitions, make sure they are consistent so that the, the models defined here can be easily used by any other models for augmentations. And, and we did have uh, Tony join the queue again. Tony? Hi, uh, working group chair hat off. Um, I do object. I think this should be an augmentation, not a standalone. But you, you, augmentation means all the models will have dependencies on the deployment, you know, implementation and deployment of those existing models. I, I understand that, but I think that if you want to have actual link up down kind of scheduling that people pay attention to, it's going to have to be attached to a TE model or a topology model somewhere. Yeah, but the, the way we do it, it doesn't mean, you know, for example, OSPF model cannot be augmented. You know, the example I have here, you can still augment the OSPF model. And we are actually gonna, like Lou suggested, we will include some of this augmentation in this draft. You know, we think of the important one is just that we cannot possibly augment everything. Not asking you. I just you want to throw, throw in a, co a comment right here. Uh, we will. We did not consider the smaller topology model that came from I2RS that Pavan. This is AC Lindum again. We'll take a look at that one, the 8345. We didn't look at that one. We only looked at the full TE, which was. Ace, okay. Yeah, 8345, remember the. I2RS one. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think that one was, I mean, I, I thought there wasn't too much I2RS, but we could look at, I mean, we could look at that one. If that one is more relevant, that one is 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 at least. That one is actually now big. I see. Not big, yeah. Yeah. And and just to, to jump in, I, I think there have been a, a lot of very good, very specific suggestions. Uh, we will try and make sure they are captured in the notes, but uh, far better is to make sure they're captured in the mailing list. Uh, so if there are particular things to look at, um, and there have been some items on the chat related to low power modes uh, as well, I, I would just encourage that we continue these discussions on the mailing list where everyone can participate and where we do not run out of time. Um. Tony, maybe we can dis continue the discussion offline. So e especially if anybody who is not, um, who, who is against this standalone module approach, okay. please speak up now. Yes, uh, or on the mailing list. On the mailing list, send <laughs> us emails. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, next uh, we have uh, Alto. Hello everybody, this is Luis from Telefonica. Uh, I will present this uh, draft, which is about the exposing information, time variant routing information uh, using Alto as, as the mechanisms for that. So the, this uh, uh, draft was already presented at ITF 116 and 117. So it, it goes in the direction of enabling an off path mechanism for exposing the schedule topological changes. And somehow in the, in the figure, you can see the, the, the workflow of what could be the idea behind that. So essentially, uh, we can consider that a network operator uh, is programming some schedule changes, for instance, for maintenance purposes or uh, creating a software or removing a card or things like that. So this, uh, the second step would be to evaluate the, 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 the impact of these schedule changes from the point of view of that, of, from the TBR point of view. So with that feeding the uh, impacts to uh, an alto server in this case, or whatever other mechanism that could be able to expose these changes to applications so in such a way that the applications or the users of the network are uh, aware of the, the future changes, right? So for, for, with this, they can take informed decisions of uh, maybe uh, injecting traffic from another uh, endpoint or things like that. And then the final step would be the activation once the, the time for the changes is, is happening. So essentially, the, the, 
the point here is that these mechanism servers are, as a, a purpose for exposing schedule changes to applications or services. So in such a way that the, those applications or services are uh, becoming uh, aware of these routing variations. We position Alto because this is a standard solution. Alto uh, incorporates the, this cost calendar feature that allows to expose topologies in, in a scheduled manner. So the idea would be to leverage on that mechanism for this um, off-path uh, way of doing things. So the changes from version 01, we have done an assessment of uh, Alto, the cost calendar functionality against the TBR requirements for the version 00. So we, we have uh, just, uh, let's say, one step uh, uh, behind the evolution of the TBR requirements uh, document. You can see in the table somehow the, the summary of the, of the check-in. There is one of the requirements that is not covered, uh, the time overlap and, and priority. This would imply probably some extension in, in the Alto staff, but for the other requirements, the, the compliance is full or even partial, so depending on the nature of the, of the requirement. So um, also we uh, sent to the mailing list the, the question that uh, was raised in the previous ATM meeting about the similarities with the contact plan. There was some discussion on, on that in the mailing list. I, I, from my point of view, this is already clear. And apart from that, I, I performed some editor, editorial updates. So just a summary of the advantages of that um, I, I understand this approach could have. So by leveraging on Alto, uh, it's possible to implement this offloading of, of the processing of changes from the network elements. So it would be an external element, the one in charge of doing that processing and so. Also, we would uh, avoid some undesirable, undesirable uh, effects like the cascading or the propagation effect of changes in the nodes. Because this is something that could, I mean, uh, one node injecting or advertising one change could propagate uh, a kind of cascade effect in the, in the other mm -hmm. nodes. So, Making all of this uh, in, in a separate component, let's say, we avoid to, to have this cascading effect. Also, um, with this uh, uh, mechanism, we can easily consider the, the impact of uh, new links or nodes in the, in the network. So those that are not existing today, but, but will be existing in the future. Um, and finally, yeah, this of, um, because of, of the of path nature of this solution, we could have a, a mechanism to uh, advertise or communicate changes to applications or services. Uh, so yeah, enabling, this, let's say, this awareness in the application or services of the uh, potential changes in the routing. So as next steps, uh, again, I would like to collect feedback from the working group. I would like to ask for working group adoption as off-path solution for TBR, if, it, if this is convincing for the working group, for sure. And in, in any case, any comment, feedback is more than welcome. So that's all from my side. Thank you. That was quite, quite, uh, quite timely. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so the, a, a, a quick question uh, here, uh, and perhaps similar, is uh, are, has anyone uh, of those who have read the, uh, the draft uh, are there any significant concerns with what is in the draft uh, or the use of this as a potential off-path solution for TBR? Okay, uh, someone in the queue, Jing? Oh, uh, we cannot hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, we can hear no, you yes. now. Uh, Jim from China Mobile, uh, I have a question. Could using Auto for exposing TVR information meet uh, uh, the TVR linear requirements? Thank you. Could you repeat the last part? I couldn't listen to the last part. Oh, Jing, would you be able to repeat the question, please? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I, want, I want to say uh, using auto for exposing uh, TVR, uh, TVR information meet uh, the TVR time linear requirements. Uh, you know. Uh, Would they meet the timeliness requirements? The timeliness requirement. What? what? But I, I'm not, not, it's not clear to me what kind of requirement are you referring to? Maybe 
Yeah, uh, Gene, we're having some problem with the audio, but uh, if you could uh, put your question into the chat, uh, we could uh, read it there and then respond to it. And while we're waiting uh, for that, we can go to uh, the next person in the queue. So, uh, Dirty from Tsinghua University. Uh, thank you for this nice talk. And I just have two simple questions about the draft. So in the figure one in your draft, you put a network digital team here. So yes. uh, can you explain how we can yeah. set up this digital team in practice? Well, this is just an example. So the, the purpose of the idea here would be to have some kind of uh, mechanism or tool for understanding what would be the, the changes in the topology and the impacts. For instance, in, the, in terms of changes of metrics or uh, occupancy of the links or, or so, on, so on so far. So we put the network digital twin as a potential solution, but could be maybe some tool in, in uh, being part of the network controller. So this is just for illustration purposes. So uh, we, as I said, we, we put the network digital twin as a, as a reference for some tool that could help us to anticipate what will be the changes or do the calculation basically. Mm -hmm. With that, generate the, the expected new topology uh, reflecting the impacts of the, uh, of the time variant routing and also the, the calculation of metrics or, or characteristics of the new uh, consequence of the new topology. So it but, needs to continuously correct data from the network controller? Could be, yeah. But this is, I mean, the, the focus is not in the digital twin in this case. It's mm -hmm. just uh, put that uh, there, there as a reference, as a, as a tool. But yes, for sure, if, if we are using actually the, the, the network digital twin, we need to be sure that we have the proper information. So either the current topology could be injected by the network controller or could be retrieved directly from the network. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. So my, my second question is that uh, maybe in your later slides, you have mentioned the advantage of using ALTO in, for TBR, yeah. right? So uh, maybe you can move to that slide. Oh, I can not. Oh, uh, there you go. And, oh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so do you have some quantitative results? Uh, we can show these advantages? And not at this time, I, I, I mean, Quantifying the, the offload of the processing is, um, we, ha we didn't quantify yet. Uh, we can try to do so. Uh, for the other two, probably it's not a matter of quantification. It's, it's a, a kind of uh, qualitative consideration. So mm -hmm. you are moving, uh, I mean, with this of, of path mechanism, it's easy to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to have um, knowledge of what could be the the impact of new links or not, so it's, it's hard to quantify. It's just simply a matter of, of the mechanism and also the way of exposing. You no, know. so we can maybe try to quantify this. Um, mm -hmm. Could be a, an exercise, but we don't have uh, now the, that such quantification. Okay. So looking forward to your new results. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lou, I'm Lou Berger. I actually put this in chat. Um, it was a little difficult getting over here. Uh, with this document, can you support the? approach that was discussed with the last slot. Um, can you, do you have a grouping that can be reused and then incorporated into other uh, yeah. models? I, I think that this is orthogonal. So at the end, we felt that we would expose whatever uh, model. So you would add more parameters into your topology model. Yes. So it would exactly. be yet another topology model. No, I, I think that we, we could we could use the same topology model. I mean, with Alto, we could we could use the, the current protocol Alto protocol. So, exposing the current Alto network maps and cost maps sure. that are not following the any uh, uh, let's say have a particular format, but also it could be the case that Alto could expose the, the the topology models that we have. This is not happening today, but could be, could be the right. case. So it's, so it's very auto specific and not yeah. uh, really yeah. translatable to other yes yes. Uh, models. What what we could do is uh, uh, below uh, in, in this outbound interface of Alto, in the communication with the network, mm -hmm. use le leverage on the models that will be discussed here for sure. Okay. So uh, Alto, feed, let's say, collecting the information uh, either from the network controller or from the, or from the network itself through the models that uh, uh, we have discussed just before. Okay. So I think this is a question for the chairs now. When you asked about objections, is it, uh, what, what's your thinking relative to the prior document? Would the working group select one approach or the other, or is the working group going to consider both? 
That's an excellent question. Um, the 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 short answer is uh, I I can't answer that until we start seeing some of the documents form, right? If if we understand whether we're talking about augmentations or not, and whether this is only for off path or not, I think there's some scoping there that would inform those decisions. So I think this is interesting. I'm not particularly interested in Alto, but I would have no objection to the working group uh, adopting this if it was also going to adopt something based on the previous uh, uh, presentation, the previous draft. If it's an either or, then I would be strongly against this. So I think we need I, to know the context in order to answer the question that you asked. That, so that's, uh, so again, chair hat on, I, I would not consider this an either or. Okay. The question is whether if we have uh, two or more, uh, at what point do we have too many and how do we differentiate them? But, but for these two, I don't see these as either or. But I also see Tony, uh, well, was in the queue. Tony, do you have an opinion on that? Thank you. Uh, I think you covered it. You know, um, figuring out whether we're going to augment or not is really up to the uh, authors to wrestle with and the, the group to work, work, work out. Um, as far as Alto, this is certainly an acceptable delivery method if people, enough people are interested in this. Um, and that's a very big question in my mind. And I think we can address in the mailing list the question of whether enough people are interested in it by doing an adoption call. Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, our, our last uh, presentation is uh, from Sandy. And let me get slides up. Uh, good morning, I'm Sandy Zhang from ZTE. Uh, this presentation is for ITP extensions for TBR. Uh, we also then submit this draft in LSR working group. I present this draft on behalf of our co-author, Tyson. Next, please. So uh, we know that there are two important parts in TBR network. One is uh, how we must disseminating the schedule information to all the nodes in the network. And the other thing is that we must dis uh, calculate the uh, forwarding table, the correct forwarding, uh, forwarding table ahead of the schedule time. So about the routing and calculation, we know that we can calculate the routes uh, in the controller and the controller can send the uh, forwarding table to all the nodes in the network ahead of the schedule time. This is like we done in the, uh, like we did in uh, open flow network. But we know that uh, these functions will consume the bandwidth of the network because every time you must uh, put down the routing table to all the nodes. So um, it's not an efficient way. So we'd like to discuss the uh, distributed routing calculate, calculation function. And uh, also, uh, if we'd like to dissem disseminating the, uh, disseminate the uh, schedule information, we can use controller to do this. So the, uh, if there is a controller in the network and the controller can send the schedule information to all the nodes in the network, that's okay. If the variable node, which has the uh, link or cost variant feature, itself can send the schedule information to all the other nodes in the network, it's okay. But if, it, if there is no controller in the network and the variable node can't send the schedule information to all the other nodes in the network directly, and the variable node can't advertise the changes, uh, ahead of the schedule time by the traditional routing protocol. Um, that now we can use extension. So the extension can be advertised by the variable node itself or by the, the adjacent node when the variable node can't support the IGP protocols. We can also name the adjacent node as a proxy node or something else. So the advertisement will, uh, will be done 
and uh, all the other nodes can receive the schedule information and can compute the routing table ahead of the schedule time. Next, please. So let's take this configure uh, for example. Uh, in some center, uh, in some um, environment, the variable node may connect to some uh, some network uh, or nodes with link or cost variable uh, variable variant feature, such as a satellite network. So the uh, link or cost variant features must be known by all the nodes in the domain the, or the network. So the variable node can do the advertisement by itself to, uh, to the other node. And the, or if the variable node can't do this, uh, if the variable node can't support IDP protocol or something else, so the, the adjacent node or the proxy node can do the work. So the schedule information will be uh, disseminated to all the nodes in the network and the, the all the nodes in the network can compute the uh, routing table ahead of the schedule time. Next, please. So this is an extension, uh, but it's simple because uh, we just treat the schedule information as constraints uh, that will affecting, uh, that affect the routing calculation. We borrow the uh, method defined in FC 9350 to for this constraints advertisement. So we just add a new time variant sub TLV in uh, SIS or SPF fed sub TLV to carry the schedule information. And also we define a new metric type for the uh, link or cost advertisement. Next. So all the nodes in the network can receive the schedule information in advance and uh, the advertisement uh, obviously need not to be periodically. So uh, the nodes can calculate the routing table according to the FED ahead of the scheduled time. The process is like FED. So it's the same mechanism. So some updates we plan to add in the future version, uh, for example, the recurrence type, so it will make the, advice, the advertisement more simple. And uh, that's all, yeah. Uh, any comments and uh, questions, welcome, yeah. Okay. Thank you, and we do have uh, some people in the queue. Tony? Hi, several comments. Um, first one, chair hat on. Um, so there's absolutely no need to have two separate documents. Um, this can and probably should be pointed at LSR. Um, this is outside of our charter and is not, should not happen here. Um, second comment, chair hat off. Um, this is probably not how we want to do this. Uh, schedule information probably should not be in the routing protocols themselves. I say this every IETF. Routing protocols are not dump trucks. They are not transport protocols. Uh, this is not how we carry around management information. And that's what a schedule is. Uh, third point, um, this probably also does not need to be flex algo specific. Uh, this seems like a general interface or node property. And you probably don't want to do it in specific in flex algo alone. And if you do it more generally, I think it just slips into flex algo al already. Uh, okay, uh, for the first question, we think that uh, we are looking for the uh, the opinion uh, or the comments in the TBR working group at first. And then if it does make sense, we can do the work in LSR working group. Uh, and the second one is that uh, we know that we can do everything about uh, through the model or the uh, young uh, by not count or other things. But if uh, I had said in the draft that if in some situations we can't use the model to do these things, we may use routing protocol to advertise the information. So uh, that's our opinion. Uh, our third, sorry. Uh, <laughs> third question, please. Uh, the third point was it's this is not necessarily necessary in flex algo. 
Oh. Uh, it's you sh could just do this uh, directly on the interface. Uh, okay, we just borrow the method, but uh, we think that the solution can be discussed. Yeah, discussed. Mm. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Tony and and AC. You're in the queue. Okay, AC Lindum, uh, LSR LSR culture. The first thing I'm going to say is uh, that there's already there is there was somebody else that came forward with a document that on temporal links that had eight offers. So now we have two documents. I don't want to get in the middle of that. I've been in a, you know, as chair, but I'm just going to say that. Uh, and I know you tried to address whether or not this should be in your first slide or the, the first slide you had with the, how this is, you know, this, so this is really the big point here for both these documents is when, whether or not this is to go in the routing protocol. Now I'm going to disagree with Tony on uh, that flex algorithm is a bad place for it. I'm thinking it's a nice place because it automatically gives you the, uh, the backward compatibility that everybody, you, every, you know, you know, which nodes in the routing domain, only those nodes are going to use the, this temporal, you know, you're, you're only going to include those in the routing comp, comp computation for using the different metrics at different times. So I think it's a nice, it's a nice way to provide that backward compatibility and get partial deployment, which is one of the things the flex algorithm is saying. So I actually like that choice. If, if we get past this first one of saying, okay, let's put this in the routing protocol. Thank you. And then uh, Tony is back in the queue. So AC, does that mean if we want to use this, we have to use flex algo? That seems counterintuitive. Why not? I mean, it's a good thing for backward compatibility for partial deployment to have have uh, if people are going to use different network, uh, different metrics or different constraints metrics or forever, you know, and 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 support it within a routing domain. You, as you well know, you don't want some routers supporting it and some not, and both and the computing different uh, routing tables. Well, not everybody supports Flex Algo, um, so I'll meet you halfway and say do it both native and Flex Algo. Okay, and then we could use the capabilities to make sure that you don't try and use it in a domain where there are routers that don't support it. But that, that's, that was really the way. I mean, we have, we've had some other things like we had something, somebody was trying to advertise computational properties. And, and that was in, in the, in the IGPs and that was a big, uh, observers. And that was, you know, that wasn't really, it didn't catch on, but if you were going to do that, I, I, I actually told them if you're going to do this. You're going to have to do it in a flex algorithm because not everybody in the domain is going to support it. But so I think I, I actually do think flex algorithm is a nice way to provide partial deployment within a routing domain. All right. But I'll agree. I'll agree. We could do it both ways. If if we decide to put it in the routing protocol, the scheduling, the metric or availability, uh, dynamic, put it dynamically and have other people's. Now the thing Tony didn't bring up again, which he brought out with the last one, was this implies that all the clocks are synchronized across the routing domain as well. Okay, thank you. And and one more. Uh, hi, Jason from Howie. Yeah, I I'd like to. Firstly, I agree with Tony that currently this may be uh, out of the charter of the TVR working group. Uh, it seems that uh, we uh, can start to consider uh, the possibility of carrying some of this uh, uh, time variable information in the protocols. So maybe, uh, I'm not sure, uh, TVR currently is the right place to discuss this further, or maybe we can have a, another, uh, maybe interim meeting or something uh, like in the IRSR and other routing protocol working groups to further discuss this. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Uh, so we, in the final six minutes that we have, we do have uh, an open mic. I know that we cut some of the original uh, discussions uh, short to make sure we had time for all of our presentations. Uh, 
Is there anything anyone wanted to say before we adjourn? All right, uh, with that, thank you so much. And we will see everybody uh, at 119. I believe that. I believe that very much. That's an excellent point. Hi. Hello. Uh, this is Dutchie and oh, hey. the Fortune Playlist.